Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss the week 9 hour tutorial for non face to face questions that will cover for the subtopic 5.2 Alkin. So, the first question wants you to compare the boiling point between cis 2 pantene and trans 2 pantene. To start answering these questions, we need to first draw the structural formula of the cis 2 pantene and trans 2 pantene. So by having the knowledge we have learned in chapter 4, we could say that cis and trans have different arrangement in terms of the, uh, the group that attached to the each carbon. So we're going to have pentene with 5 carbons altogether. So we are going to focus on the carbon-carbon double bond and then attach to it. Let's say we want to have the cis to pentene means H here must be on the same side. And the rest of the alkyl group going to be down here. It can, it can be either ups or downs as long as they are on the same side. So CH2, CH3. So this is our cis 2 pantene And we could see that the in the double point at carbon number 2. So the numbering starts from here. <coughs> While for the second one, we have trans 2 pantene it, the same group going to be on the opposite side so we have the C double bond C attached to it H and the other one going to be H so we're going to have our CH3 here and another CH2 CH3 down here so this is our trans 2 pantene again the carbon that holding the double bond is at carbon number 2 that's why the name is 2 pantene indicate the locations of the functional group now, why there's difference in boiling point of cis and trans isomer? When we say boiling point, we are talking about the intermolecular forces. Okay, let's recall how many types of intermolecular forces we have learned. We have hydrogen bond, we have dipole-dipole forces, and last one we have London forces. But from this compound of pantene, we could see that we got no hydrogen bond directly attached to either fluorine, oxygen or nitrogen so means that hydrogen bond is disqualified from our selections. We are left with dipole-dipole and also London forces. So how do we determine whether which of these compound got dipole-dipole and London forces? So the difference that lies between these two isomers is the polarity of a molecule. So when we learn about polarity, we need to denote the polar arrow to indicate the polarity of the molecules. So now, we're going to indicate the polarity by using the partially positive and partially negative. So, we are going to focus on the carbon-carbon double bond here because we have abundance of electrons means they're going to hold the partially negative side. So, this is going to be partially negative, partially negative means that the CH3 also have electrons but they have less electron than the carbon-carbon double bond they will have a partially positive side this is partially positive and partially positive to indicate the polarity of a molecule this polar bond will always pointing towards a more electronegative atom so in this case the polar arrow will pointing towards the carbon-carbon double bond. So both of the polar arrow will point towards the carbon-carbon double bond showing there is unequal distributions of electrons. So when having unequal distributions of electrons means the mu is no longer equal to zero. Therefore, we could say that this is a polar molecules. While for trans, we have the polar arrow pointing towards the carbon-carbon double bond. We have polar arrow pointing towards carbon-carbon double bond and this one pointing towards carbon-carbon double bond. So these polar arrow meet each other and we could see from this particular arrangement there is cancellations of distributions of the electrons. Indicates that the mu is now equal to zero. Therefore, we could say that this trans 2 pentane is a non-polar molecule. 
So by having the polarity of this molecule, we could check the intermolecular forces present between them. So the, pres the forces that have between the same molecules, if we have polar and polar, they're going to have dipole-dipole forces and together with London forces. As for trans, because this is non-polar molecule, when they are close to each other, they're going to form London forces only without the dipole-dipole forces. So by having dipole-dipole forces, which is, which is much stronger than London forces, that's why the boiling point of cis 2 pentene is much higher than the boiling point of trans 2 pentene. So the polarity of molecule really determines the boiling point of these two structures. Moving on to the next questions, we need to write the equations for preparations of propene from 2-chloropropene. So let's recall again, we have two reactions involving formations of alkene, means from single bond to become multiple bond. So we're going to apply the eliminations reactions. In order for you to start doing these reactions, we need to first draw the structural formula for the compound given. So since we are going to form in, in means we have carbon-carbon double bond. So I'm going to show you the bonding between the two carbon that we are desired to do the reactions. So now, this propane means you have hydrocarbon with three carbons. So we're going to have one, two, three. And then at carbon number two, we have chloro. And the rest is going to be CH3. CH, don't forget that carbon can only form up to four bonds. This is CH2. I, I put only CH2 because I want to show the H here. Why do I do this? Because I want to eliminate the H and Cl. So from these reactions, we are going to form carbon-carbon carbon, carbon double bond. These two carbon, that's why I have these two C and H and C and Cl. So I'm going to form the double bond between this carbon. So we're going to have the CH3, CH, double bond, CH2. So what are we going to do is we are going to eliminate these two. How are we going to eliminate these two? We really need a conditions for this reaction. So the condition should be written on this arrow. So what are we going to write in here? Since this is haloalkane, then we need conditions of potassium hydroxide with the presence of alcohol. So usually we use ethanol under the conditions of reflux. So you need to write this in order for you to form these reactions. Without conditions and also the solutions, we cannot perform these reactions. So by eliminating this H and Cl from the haloalkane, we're going to get our carbon-carbon double bond. So propane is formed in these reactions. For the second reactions, we're going to prepare the propane from 1-propanol. So 1-propanol, we have hydrocarbons of 3 carbons. So we have CH3, CH, CH2. And then attached to the carbon number 1, we have OH because it is an O, comes from the alcohol hydroxyl group. So another one, we're going to have H. So from this alcohol, we're going to eliminate both H and also OH. That's why the name of this reaction is dehydration because we want to eliminate the water. So for these reactions to proceed, we need a solutions and also the conditions. So with the presence of concentrated with the presence of concentrated H2SO4 so before this we use the alkali now we are going to form, use acid and under the conditions of heat we are going to form our desired alkene which is the propene so we have CH3 CH double bond CH2 so make sure the H and OH or H or NCL that you eliminate must be tailored with the carbon that you are going to form the double bond. Now let's proceed to the final questions which is question 3. 
Question 3a need wants you to define the Schizaff's rule. So Schizaff's rule states that the eliminations reactions will give an alkene with the most highly substituted alkene. So the keyword here is most highly substituted alkene as the major product. In other words, this rule is applied to determine the major product formed when we have form uh, an alkene. So we need to focus on the carbon-carbon double bond. Look at who are they going to attach to. So if we have more number of carbon attached to the carbon-carbon double bond here, means they, are, they can be considered as major product. So for B, we need to draw the structural formula of alkenes that would be formed when 2-bromo-2-methylbutane react with potassium hydroxide in ethanol. Then we need to apply this rule to predict the major product. We'll draw the structural formula given. So we have 2-bromo-2-methylbutane means our longest chain gonna be 4-carbon. And then at carbon number 2, we have two subsequent attached to it. Let's say we'll start with our numbering from the right. Means up here we have CH3. Down here we have Br. So the rest of them going to be CH3, CH2 and CH3. So this is our 2-bromo-2-methylbutane. They already gives you the solutions and also the conditions. So we have... Potassium hydroxide in ethanol. Don't forget the conditions for these reactions where we need a reflux conditions in order for these reactions to proceed. And then we are going to form a product. So initially we have an example regarding three carbons. Pro, uh, pro, propene method prop. So now we have additional carbon. We have one, two and three Four. So, the question wants you to determine the major product means that we're going to have a mixture of product in here. How do we know we're going to have a mixture of product? It all depends on the stability of this carbon-carbon double bond suggested by the Schizaff's rule. So, if we look here, we are going to involve the two carbon. Our first, uh, our first product is going to take the first two carbons here to form double bond. So we have another possibility where we could form carbon-carbon double bond here. How do we know that we can have two possibilities? Because the eliminations of hydrogens, because this is haloalkane, we are going to eliminate H and also X. We know that X will come from this carbon, means the hydrogen will be eliminated from the neighboring carbon. If you look at the central carbon here, we have two neighboring carbons. One comes from this carbon, another one comes from this carbon. That's why we have two possibilities of alkene being formed. If we eliminate hydrogens from the carbon on the left, we're going to form carbon-carbon double bond between carbon number two and carbon number three. So we have CH. So don't forget the double bond because this is a functional group. You have to show them. And then we have C here. We have already eliminated the Br left with CH3 and CH3. Make sure that your carbon got four bonds between their neighbors. So this is going to be our first product. So we have another product that comes from the neighboring carbon on the right. We're going to form carbon-carbon double bond between first carbon and also second carbon. So we have CH3. CH, now we are left with only CH3 and then we eliminate the Br and also H from the neighboring carbon. We're going to have double bond here left with CH2. So if we look at these two compounds, focus on the carbon-carbon double bond. This is our carbon-carbon double bond and this is our carbon-carbon double bond. So now look at how many substituents attached to this compound alkyl group attached to this carbon carbon double bond while for the second compound we have only one and two alkyl group attached to it so by having more substituents attached to the carbon carbon double bond 
this will indicate that the first compound gonna be the major product while the second compound gonna be the minor product as suggested by Shazaf's rule. To outline the mechanism for the formations of major product, we need to rewrite the reactions equations we have done earlier. So since these reactions is called as dehydrations of alcohol, means we are going to remove H and OH. And this will involve two carbon. So OH will be eliminated from this C, while the H will either comes from this H or this H. It all depends on the stability of the intermediate species that we are going to form after this. Since we are going to involve the carbocation, means we need to first look at the stability of carbocation formed. If we remove the hydrogen from the first carbon, means we're going to have only primary carbocation. If it comes from the secondary carbon, means this is secondary carbocation. If it comes from this hydrogen at carbonometry, it will have tertiary carbocation. So we need to consider to make it to become tertiary carbocation if possible because we want this major product. So the first step for mechanism is called as protonations of alcohol. During these steps, we're going to make this alcohol comes from the OH become a positive charge. So we need to first write our structure. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to make this OH become more positive. How do we do this? We'll see after this. Since the reaction suggests the reaction with concentrated H2SO4, then we're going to react with this H2SO4. But please draw it like this because we want to show the breaking of bond. So one of them will become the nuclear file. Then we're gonna take we're gonna donate this lone pair to the H and break the bond between this H and O because H is a duplet, they cannot form two bonding. Now we're gonna get a product of one, two, three, four, and five. So we have our O now has lost one of its lone pair, but got the H and if we count the formal charge on this O, they're going to be positive. While for O, S, O, 3, H, they got all the electrons, means they're going to form negative charge because they got extra electrons. Okay, that is for the first step. We have formed a protonated alcohol. As for the second step, we're going to do the formations of carbocation. So step two involves the formations of carbocation. So we know already this positive and negative charge can only be formed from the heterolytic cleavage means you need to look at the carbon that has polar bond with something else. So from this structure we have only the C and O. So we are interested to form our carbocation from this bond. So one, two, three, four, and five. We have OH2 up here together with the positive charge. So now we are interested in this carbocation. So this is partially positive and partially negative. So hydrolytic cleavage will happen in here and all the electron on this bond will be transferred to this O making our carbocation of this from this structure so we have here and then we have remove water in other words we have removed the OH from our compound so this is going to be our positive carbocation so initially we have secondary carbocation to start with from this carbocation we have the possibilities to form double bond with these two neighboring carbons so here and here look at this the look at the neighboring carbon at carbon number three they got more alkyl group attached to it so if we have the possibilities to form a more stable carbocation then we have to go for this rearrangement so rearrangements can be generated by using this arrow so we have two types of rearrangement one is one to hydride sheaved Another one is 1 to methanite shift. 
when we say smetanite and hydride, they are all H and also CH3 that attach to that particular carbon. Which carbon? The neighboring carbon. So, how do we know that they are 1, 2? 1, 2 doesn't mean that they come from carbon number 1 and carbon number 2. They are mainly next to each other. 1, 2 means next to each other. They are not far apart. So, so we are going to determine what kind of shift are we going to form in order for you to make this carbocation ion a more stable carbocation ion. So by shifting to the left, so we need to look at this third carbon. We have one metal and then we have here H. Okay, so if we got no other bonding here, means they belong to H. So we want to swap place with this carbocation ion. So we have both hydrogen and also metal. So which of those gonna be swapped with this carbocation ion? So if we have hydrogen present on the neighboring carbon, even though they have both, always go for the hydrogen, for the hydride shift because for methanite to be shifted, they require more energy. It is very hard to swap place with the big group. So now we're going to shift the hydrogen with the carbocation ion. So how are we going to show this shift? The shift do not come from the H, they come from this bond. So from the bond, we are going to show the curly arrow. So this curly arrow doesn't mean they are going to cleave the bond. They are going to swap place only. So show it to you here. By doing this, the carbocation ion will swap place. So we're going to get a new compound with carbocation ion at the central, at the third carbon. So we're going to have our carbocation ion here. All right. So H will, will go here. Lah. So we have this H. You don't need to show this because it's a skeletal structure. So you need to mention what kind of shift have you done. So we have done 1, 2, hydride shift. Alright, so that's for your second step always look for a more stable carbocation ion so by doing this we have from a more stable carbocation ion if you don't have any possibility to do to make a more stable carbocation ion then no need to do this rearrangement last but not least is the third step where we are going to form the alkene so step 3 involves the formations of c double bond c the alkene so we have to rewrite our Compound one, two, three, four. So here we have our carbocation ion in here. So this is an electron deficient species. In order for this compound to form alkene, we need a more electron rich species to attack. So since we have used acid catalyst, means we are going to regenerate the acid catalyst by taking the OSO3H we have formed earlier. To become the nucleophile in these steps so we have negative charge in here so we want to form the double bond means that we are going to remove another h so this h will comes from the neighboring carbon of this carbocation ion so if we look here we have two neighboring carbons one two another one is three so we have three possibilities if we take the hydrogens from the from this carbon we are not going to get a major product because the double bond formed in here we only have two alkyl group attached to it so we cannot take the hydrogen from this carbon so then look at the other two carbon they have got the same environment so you are free to choose whether you want to take the hydrogen from the right or from the left only one because we want to eliminate h only one h so let's take the carbon from the right to become the carbon-carbon double bond with this carbocation ion. So we need to show the bonding between this carbon and hydrogen because we want to show the mechanism. So this lone pair on this oxygen will take this H and then this bond will break. They will break not to give to the carbon but they want to give to the single bond between C and also this carbocation ion. So we are going to take the curly arrow from here to give it here and lastly we're going to get our major product of one two three four so we have here 
this is our double bond so this is the mechanism for major product involving the three steps we'll proceed to the final questions for this tutorial where we need to define the Makarnikov rules so Makarnikov rule states that in addition of HX to alkene hydrogen atom adds to the carbon atom of the double bond that has greater number of H atoms it means that if you have carbon carbon double bond and directly attached to it is H2 while the other one gonna be H and also CH we let's say this carbon gonna have more hydrogen on it therefore if we want to add HX this H will be added to this carbon while this X will add it will be added to this carbon so for 3B we're going to complete the following chemical reactions so we have structure of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then we have metal in here and metal in here so we have double bond so let's first name this compound so this is a cyclopentene and at carbon number 1 we have this double bond so the numbering will start from here 1, 2 and 3 so we have two substituents with the same group so the name gonna be 1, 3, both are metal, so dimethyl, cyclopentene. We don't need to put the 1 or 2 because this is already at carbon number 1. So 1, 3, dimethyl, cyclopentene. So we're going to perform 5 reactions on this 1, 3, dimethyl, cyclopentene. The first one, we're going to react this compound with hydrogen gas with the presence of platinum as the catalyst so we are going to expect this kind of product so let's first draw the structure so we have this structure to start with once the bond is broken then hydrogen will be added to both carbons so we're gonna have hydrogen on the first carbon together with the second carbon so this is our product when react with hydrogen gas next we have bromine gas react in water so this reaction is called as halogenation in water since we have two different atoms to be added then we need to apply the Makarnikov rules initially the Makarnikov rules emphasize the hydrogen atom but since we got no hydrogen atom to be added to this 1,3-dimethyl cyclopentene from these reactions. We're going to apply the same rule for this Br. Means Br will follow the Makarnikov. So we're going to rewrite the structure of this compound. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have this to start with. The Br will follow the Makarnikov rule. They will go to carbon with more hydrogen. While OH will take place here at the first carbon. For the third reactions, we have a reactions of chlorine. So we have chlorine gas react with this 1,3-dimethyl cyclopentene in CH2Cl2. CH2Cl2 is a common inert solvent used for any of these reactions. So because this is an inert solvent, means they won't take place in these reactions, only the Cl. So both Cl will be added to both carbon. So our product gonna be like this. So both carbon will have Cl on them. And then for the fourth reactions, we have reactions of HBr with nothing on this arrow means they are being conducted in inert solvent. So inert solvent means we're going to add H and also Br. So these reactions called hydrohalogenations will follow the Makarnikov rules. So simply rewrite our structure like this. And then H will attach to the carbon with more H on it. And the Br will be added to the first carbon. And last but not least, we're going to react this 1,3-dimethyl cyclopentene with... Water. So this time around, not just water, but water in 
acidified solution H plus means that we are going to add two different atoms H and also OH so these hydration reactions will also follow the Makarnikov rules where we are going to add hydrogens add carbon with more hydrogens so H will be added to this carbon while OH will be added to this carbon so that's all for today's tutorial. I hope you get something from this tutorial. Thank you.